Marta Pozo Gil, e cila vje nga MBR TV, me siguri kjeni një për filmën e MBR TV. Marta Pozo është një eksperte e lidhë edhe brim standards, aja është personi për gjetës në MBR TV që i bjenë këto objekte të të në të realizume edhe planet hapsirore dhe në atë nivel dhe në mushën në lidhë edhe brim. Pa e zgjallë shumë kësha pas që e do të thonë njëftur, për para për kështë të të regoj që pas ligjë rratës dhe da kemi një debat interaktiv me ju, se pjesë mars, në lidhe me urbanizmin edhe në Kosovë, për dhe në përgjësim e prezentimin. Gjithashtu në panel të tjetë dhe i shaku Majtumbi, zyrtar për gjelëgjës prajnë ju e në habitatit, programi për në vështetjen e komunave në planifikim hapsirot. Ju fajnë dhe. Hello, good afternoon. First of all, I would like to thank to the organization of, the, of this program for the opportunity that it brings to MBRDB to share uh, his ideas and also to contribute to this fantastic initiative about future models. The presentation I will make, uh, it will have a few parts. First, I will present very, uh, very briefly how we work, and then I will, I will focus on how we can improve our cities through sustainability. I will, I will show, I will show th a few examples and strategies that we use in the, in the office, and then I will focus in four specific projects at different scales, so that we can go uh, more in details. The office is called, uh, after the names of the three directors, this is Vinny Mas, Jacob Van Ries and Nathalie De Vries. It's located in, in Rotterdam and we are about 60, 70 uh, employees or from, different nation, uh, from different nationalities. The, the office works like a, like a workshop, it's a place where we study, uh, we study options, we make researches, researches we really try to look for the best uh, the best solutions to the given situation that comes to the to the to the office in the different projects our way of communication actually is uh, is mostly uh, through our buildings but also the office works in close collaboration with a thinking tank this is the Y factory and with the Y factory the uh, we have published uh, different books Few of them, they focus on sustainability. One is the, the screen Green Dream that explores the challenges of uh, green buildings and green urban planning. It's also another book that is called Biodiversity that it explores how, um, how cities would be if we, uh, we, real, if we, if we really uh, um, maximize the relationship between nature and and people. How it will be, we don't only uh, design our cities for, uh, for the people, but also for animals and for plants. How it will be this symbiosis. And what about sustainability? We have one Earth, but actually if everybody had the ecological footprint of the USA, then we would need four and a half, 4.3 Earths. So actually this is a call for urgency for green cities. The situation where we work actually is that we have a growing population and at the same time a decreasing uh, amount of resources. With this, actually, the solutions that we have to find, they have to be more open, we have to be open-minded, we have to be, <coughs> we have to be also uh, to look for, for, uh, for solutions that they are more resilient, more stable, also more secure, more efficient. Also, more, we have to be more cosmopolitan and more mixed. And uh, last but not least, also, we have to look for uh, human planning and, and buildings that they are attractive and they are exciting for the users. So at the end, actually, we are more ambitious and we all also have to be more responsible on all levels, from the users, from the municipality, from the architects, the human planners. And what about the green buildings? Actually, in the recent years, there have been a lot of green buildings, and a lot of buildings have been uh, labeled by this uh, sustainability world. And what is a fact about the, about the, about the green buildings is that with the label of sustainability, it seems that many things are allowed. And at the end, uh, sustainability is a field that allows a lot of potential in innovation, allows a lot of potential in design, but this, much of this potential is still unexplored. And this is what happened with green buildings, that many times they remain still ugly and not attractive for the users. 
Green, green adds on that are not part of the sign shapes the image of sustainable architecture in most of the cases. Also, the typical green look is often just a cliche. And when budget is, uh, is tight, the only thing that remains in the green buildings is the green roof. I tell you, we have to be more, more demanding about what sustainability means and what it can bring to, to our daily life. Has, uh, has sustainability become a, a religious? Actually, with no doubt, it has become a show and, a show and it has become fashionable. But we have, uh, we have to, to explore the new potential that it, uh, that it brings. So it was time for the green dream, and now we have to go into the green reality. Green architecture and urbanism should explore more than simply energy and utilitarian aims. It should also take into account the sense of beauty, complexity, and delight. Because at the end, what we build, our cities and the buildings, they are for the users, they are for the inhabitants. So they should be exciting places. They should be places that are lively, that are, 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 that are to enjoy. So we have to take into account both things. It's, it's about energy, it's about decreasing the use of resources, but it's also about creating interesting environments for the people. If we have a look to the society development, we can see that uh, at the beginning, the, the cities normally start being poor and dirty. They then become wealthy and dirty. This is the case of some of the, or many of the cities in China still. And at the end, what the city aims is to become wealthy and clean. And why is that? This is because people want and deserve quality of life. And this is what we should give to the, to the people. And what's the role of the architect in all, in all this? <laughs> I'm going now to go through different strategies that we use in, in different projects to have an, an overview of different uh, possibilities that we can, that we can uh, do. Of course, it's always important to, to build compact. A smart land of use is also a main, a main point in here in this, in, in this project. In, in Spain, there is an eco-city, and from all the land, uh, only 10% is for, is, for, is for the building and the rest is re it, it remains for, uh, for the energy production, but it will be a specific energy production, but it will, it will be friendly. It will be solar panels in the public realm, so that actually the people are really connected to the production of energy. It's not, more, it's not any more detached from the society. Sometimes sustainability depends on, the, on high technology, and this is the case of this building in, in, in the Netherlands. This is a library where all the clear control is done with, high, with sophisticated uh, technologies. <coughs> also important is, of course, the energy efficiency, and for this, from the very beginning in the projects, we study which is the proper uh, location, which is the proper dimension regarding the, regarding the program, so to use as less energy as possible in the building. It's an example of an eco home. And actually what we try is to is to make a sustainable house that is it goes out of the cliche of of what is the image of uh, of eco house. Transformation is very important in our cities. Now that more and more there are uh, old buildings that remain obsolete, then we should be able to transport them to, to, to find new uses. This is the case in these silos in Copenhagen that they were they were transformed to be dwellings. And along with transformation, it can be reused. This is an example of the reuse of an industrial building for, that it was transformed into a calling center. Here the budget was very low, so actually all the effort was done in the, in the interior to make a healthy working environment. Sometimes we have been asked to do projects in places where the landscape is fantastic. And then yeah, you, you question what we can do here. And actually, when, when it comes to, this, to these places where the nature is so intense, the best we can do is to do nothing. And here this was the case in, in, this, um, in this project. It's a, a holiday resort in Montenegro. And here actually the client came with a, with a feasibility study of towers in this fantastic hill. And then what we propose is to make hidden architecture. So actually to give all the priority to nature, this is the beauty of the place, and then the architecture, it would be hidden. Sometimes it's also possible through, build, uh, through architecture to bring some quality of air. We can also 
give programs to the to give program to the city and at the same time improve in even the air of the city. This is the, the case in Barcelona. There is a shopping center. And what we did is to place a forest on the top of the shopping center so that actually the environment would, uh, would improve. Here, this is another project where the, the main focus of the design was, uh, was to, maximize the, uh, to maximize the sunlight in all parts of the master plan so that all the program, all the houses, they would have at least two hours the sunlight in the, in the, 20, uh, the 21 uh, of December. Green transportation, that is very important in our cities. And actually, this is a field where it's, what the, the coordination it's on, yeah, the, the coordination of all the parties are very important because it happens sustainability that many efforts have been done. But many of these efforts also, they are very detached from each other. So at the end, there's not, um, there's not a visible and a strong result. And with green transportation, actually, it's very important that municipality than, green, uh, than city planners, they came together, also uses so really to have a, a good network on, of, of transport, public transport. This is a, a master plan in Almere, in the Netherlands. But really here, what we explored it was how it would be if we give more protagonism to the users. So actually there is a space for individualism, there is a space for, uh, for the users to create their own house. So that, uh, now that we are it's coming a moment where the human planning is highly regulated, who it will be if we also allow the users to be part of the process? We were talking that actually it has to be an op open process, the design of the city. It cannot be only done from the people in an office. So this has to be also the users who, who should bring, uh, bring in, in, the, in this process. And this is one, one example in this project where we explore this idea. And last but not least is innovation. Actually, sustainability, sustainability gives a big potential for, for innovation. Now I'm going to show more in detail uh, a few projects. One, this is the first one, is uh, I start with a small scale. This is this, how we can densify all cities and how we can, how over, over all cities they can grow. In the office, we are asked to, to make an extension of, of, of this house. Actually, the family who were living there, they wanted to have separate rooms for the children because they were growing. And then at the beginning, we are dealing with where we could add all these rooms. After uh, looking at the house, we went up to the, to, the, to the terrace, and then we saw that it was a flat empty. So then we decided who it would be if actually we designed uh, separate units for the different members of the family, so that actually they have their private, uh, their private life, but and and then they are arranged the units like if uh, like creating the, uh, small alleys, small plazas. <coughs> so it would be like a mini village that we create on the top of the building. This is the different ledges. It's first the connection of the new extension to the existing, then it comes the reinforce of the of the house. Then the, the the new rooftop with the different furniture, so to create like this kind of plazas, streets, alleys, and then the different pavilions. So that, as I said, this we create as this kind of mini village on the top of the of the city. Here we see the sections with the with the connections. Here is the reinforce of the of the structure, the wooden the wooden house. This is the interior how it connected with the, existing, with the existing house. And this is the result. Here we see one of what we could call one of the, of the places, and then also the, the little halley. And we see the, these different pavilions that it, uh, that it gives privacy for the different uh, members of the family, while at the same time they are, they are together. This is the street view. Actually, here we try to, to follow the same topologies as the rest of the neighborhood, but we paint it in, in blue, actually to, to connect with the sky and also to pop out from the, from the neighborhood, even though the topology is the same that is just in the surrounding. And the importance of this small, of this small project is that it was iconic for a larger agenda. How we can uh, densify our cities, how our cities should, uh, should grow. They should grow horizontally, they should grow vertically, how it should work. Actually, we think that densification of the cities is necessary. We should preserve 
the, the agricultural land, the, uh, the nature. So then actually our cities should grow, should, de should get densified. They should, we should work in a stacking program. And how, this is how it comes, this study of the vertical village. This is, a, this is a study and this is the response of how many cities they are growing. We see more and more often that the cities, they are just, they have like a kind of block attack. This is, these buildings, anonymous with any kind of character, any kind of identity, where people, you cannot feel identified with this, with the place where you live. And they are all over the cities. Sometimes larger, sometimes smaller, but we see that they are more and more often uh, populating our cities. And what's the reaction to, to, to this fact? What, what is next? Should we accept it or we should try to, to see what is the qualities that our cities need? And to look for an architecture, for a urban planning that actually um, satisfies the, the, the demands of people. And this is what Vertical Village explores. And all these uh, vertical village explore solutions that are individual, informal, and, and intense. If we study this, is, uh, here we see like the different uh, properties that we think that the community should have. This is what the people need. Uh, people need uh, collectivity, diversity, identity, the solutions, and uh, the, the architecture and human planning, they should be flexible. What we cannot do is to create some, to create human planning and, and buildings that they are rich in. Because they are structures that they will remain for years, many years, and what will happen? We can, cannot impose this to the future generation. So we have now to, to design, um, giving a buffer, so that there is a place for adaptability and for flexibility. Also, it's important to keep the human scale, and informality, because this is that has to do with the individual individual expression and density, as I say, also the, to explore the density and collectivity. So, in vertical village, this is what we try to what we try, what we try to to explore and research, and is how villages, uh, how the cities can grow at the same time that they that they keep the the, uh, the features of the of the of, of villages. And, but of course, we cannot talk. Also, we cannot. We cannot talk about spontaneous growth without any kind of any kind of, uh, of rules. So we have a minimum rules so that you create your own house, but at the same time you respect your neighbor. And this is how it comes. These uh, uh, rules about the structure, about access, about climate, and about outdoor space. For the rest, we give the. Uh, as long as you don't uh, bother your neighbor, then. The, the users should have the, the freedom to create their own house and to have this individual expression in the in the city. I, I'm not going to go more in in the in this study because it's a it's a it's a long study. Now I'm going to to show I'm going to show a, a case study that we did in Taipei. This is the this is the blog. It's not very clear in the screen. And then it starts when one, one person just want to want to add a house in this neighborhood. So it comes and it builds it. It doesn't bother the neighbor, so he can build it. And he creates also an access. Then it creates also a garden next to the house. Then it comes another one, also wants to build a house, and it places it there. It doesn't bother the neighbor, so he can do it. And like that, it starts to come more program. This can be apartments, this can be office, this is a market. Then it comes a, a shopping store with other other program, and like that is coming through the years more program. Always respecting the always respecting the neighbors, so that there's always um, um, exit, emergency exit. There's sunlight for everybody, ventilation. But it grows in a spontaneous grow in a spontaneous way. It grows keeping always the the, the human scale. Not this mega structure where people don't feel don't feel attached and where you don't feel identified with them. So it's like uh, the properties of the village we bring it in the city, and it keeps on growing. There's also parks. There's also uh, open spaces to people from to enjoy, and all kind of different program. And at the end, this is one of the of the outputs that it uh, that it could uh, that it could have. 
Actually, there is a, for this vertical village, there has been two, two software developed. One is the house maker, the other one is the village maker. And following them through the program, then you generate your own house, but keeping the rules. That you, so actually, it's like a kind of, of game to create uh, to create your, your own house without bothering the without bothering the neighbors. And this is some overview of the different zooms, so that you can see the diversity and the creativity that and the different scales that it, that the model can have. And as is, uh, here in the vertical village, actually, uh, there are different. Uh, Parameters: One are the actors, the people that are involved. Then the program that it's going to to bring the budget that that is going to uh, that, uh, that that is going to be, and also to take into account this, all the sustainability features. So that is a is a sustainable model. Now I will I will explain um, who, who, uh, what uh, what did we bring nature into the city? What we can what benefits we can take from it. This is a project in Barcelona. We were asked to create a, a shopping center. The, the plot is quite uh, far from the, from, uh, from the center of the city and from the diagonal, the most popular places in Barcelona. But the, icon, but the, the client, even though he wanted, to, he wanted an icon. So when you talk about icon, it seems that the only thing that is possible is to make it hide. Because it's high, then it's visible, and then it's iconic. But then, uh, with discussions with the client, we try to convince how a uh, building can be iconic through the properties that it brings to the neighborhood. So improving the city or this this piece of, of city, how it can become iconic. This is the this is the the existing the 16 plot. The, the shopping center actually is an extension of an existing shopping center that, uh, that is there. And this is what is now, it's just a, a parking lot. We start with, this is the existing shopping center, and outline is the, is the plot. We, we make an offset of the site so that we integrate the, uh, the existing shopping center into our project. Then we create the, the parking. Then the different islands of the of the shopping center, and we we create connections of the different islands. Uh, given the fact that this in Barcelona, then it was the shading was very important, so we create cantilever uh, so that it saves the it saves all the all the shops. And then we wanted uh, to make the roof accessible, so we we pull down some of the some of the of the corners so that uh, it creates accessibility to the to the rooftop. And other corners, they are pulled uh, pull up so that it's, uh, it emphasizes the entrances. We make connections also in the rooftop so that this uh, now is a, uni uh, uniform, uh, a uniform surface. We add some shops, a ring path, and at the end what we add is it's a forest. And later it may come some residential that the client were really, really insisting to have. So this is the this is the the scheme that we propose. Actually, here what we want is not only offering shops to the neighborhood, but also to offer a big public space, uh, also to to bring new experiences. How it how it would be to go shopping in in a in a forest? How can we really stimulate our our daily our daily activities with new experiences? And this is as simple as bringing uh, for, uh, bringing nature into the city. Now, how the cities are growing, actually, we are more and more detached from nature. So then, actually, what we try in many of our projects is actually to find this link between nature and, and between people, and how we can both benefit of, of it. This is an, an example. Uh, this is the existing situation. This is how it will be in the, in the future. Here we see the section. Some environmental features is that since uh, in the shopping center actually most of the consumption it comes from the climatization and from the lighting. So it was it was uh, we were really very strict in studying uh, the passive lighting and what we could uh, create to good airflow to uh, to avoid as much as possible the climatization and also the the, the lighting through uh, through electricity. Also, thank you. Uh, thanks to the uh, to the forest on the top, then it, it will bring this cooling effect. 
also because the, of the forest we had to add a very, a very big uh, slab, a slab of, of concrete and this is good, uh, good help for insulation, uh, it would work as insulation thermal mass and also thermal mass that stores cool. And as in all projects that we are uh, landscapes, it's, import, uh, it's, a, it's a main feature, it's very important to take into account the cycle of water, that is rainwater and green water recycle, harvesting. And this is the, the result of how it, could, uh, how it will be the, 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 the shopping center. So here, as I said, what we try actually is to explore this new relationship between nature and the, and the, and, and the city and how we can, through a, through a project, so we can also improve the neighborhood. So actually we don't work only in the plot that, uh, that the client gave us. We try to really to see in a more, uh, in a more brighter scope and to, to see the surrounding and try to, to improve the, the district, the city. This is a, a, a project in, in Bordeaux and here the main, the main idea was to create a master plan where everybody would, uh, could enjoy the, the sunlight and the daylight. This is the city of Bordeaux that is divided by the, by the, by the river. Actually the main, here we see in the morphology that the, the city center is in one part of the river and this is a UNESCO heritage protected and just uh, 30, uh, 300 kilometer, 300 meters in front, there is a part that is, is nearly abandoned, and here is where we were asked by the municipality to create a to create a a, pro, a, a project, a master plan that it would activate the area and, and it could it, it could be considered as an extension of the, of the existing of the existing uh, center of the city. So then it comes the question. When, when we have to, to extend our cities, in Europe, especially in Europe where there's a lot of uh, heritage, what is, the, what is the goal, what, is, what we aim at? And actually what, uh, what we think is that we should always respect the, what, what is already there, we should respect our heritage which is, uh, which is very rich in Europe. It's always very important to make a connection so that actually we don't have different parts of the city disconnected, but all the opposite. So that they, everything is connected. That it's easy for the for the citizens to go to one part to, to the other. And very important is not to design cities for cars, so that actually we design for people. And this is something that actually we try to implement in this master plan. And here, what we did is to create a, a streets of of maximum 10 meters, and we are. Uh, the pedestrian and the bikes they have priorities over the over the cars. So it's important to create dense neighborhoods, diverse. That I say that's not always these monotonous houses that uh, that uh, they are appearing more and more in our cities. To keep uh, to keep the human scale and this intimacy, and also uh, green green spaces is important. Daylight and sunlight for everybody, and where possible, also to, to try to to use as much energy as possible and to create zero energy neighborhoods. So, with all these uh, goals in our mind, this is how we start to to develop uh, this uh, the design of this master plan. Our starting point was the existing, and really we wanted it to be real starting point, not to make, a, not to start from scratch. So then, we respect every single building that it was, that it was, uh, it was there. And since there were a lot of ra uh, rail tracks, we also proposed that the new plots they will be on the rail tracks, so that actually people could could have in their in their mind what was the structure uh, before. Since we want to create dense cities or dense neighborhoods. Then we also create plots in the inverse, in the open space that it was between the existing buildings and the and the rail tracks. We create the different uh, all the uh, the the, connect, uh, the different connections. Here we had uh, a lot of uh, the tram line. It was uh, it was integrated and also bus and and bicycle lanes. And as I said here we. We, we had long discussions with the municipality to keep the, the, the street as narrow as possible and above all not to give priority to the, to the car. Then we make extrusion of all, of all the plots 
that through this exercise they, they are created, but of course we want daylight to everybody. So then here we make a cut of 45 degrees from, uh, from the facade of the, on the opposite facade, and then this is what we get. But we, not, we don't want only daylight, but also sunlight to everybody. And this is here, this is a cut of sunlight of 22 degrees from the south. So at this point, all the volumes here, they have, sun, uh, they have at least two hours of sunlight, the 21st of, of December. And doing this, then we create uh, 144 uh, different plots. And these plots, they were in order to, to promote the diversity, they will be uh, they will, they will developed by different architects. The plus needs to have natural ventilation, so that's, that's why we, uh, we make them maximum uh, 14, 15, meters, uh, 15 meters width. And then we create a, like a network of, uh, of, green, uh, of green, what we call pocket parks. They, they are like a small, a small, scale, uh, a small scale gardens, 65 all in total in the, in the master plan. So they are scattered all along the, the area. All over the area, and in order to achieve the, uh, in order to achieve a zero energy, then we uh, we put solar panels in all the all, all the south uh, roof, and all the rest it will be it will be green uh, green green roofs, and of course at the end we also integrate all the cycle uh, cycle of, of water. So at the end this is the saves that it generates, and we see this. Um, that it, it could, yeah, it could appear like an iconic uh, roof, uh, roof escape, but actually it's it's the, the result of a process. It's the result of wanting to achieve uh, to achieve sunlight for for everybody. This is how it looks now, how it looks now, and this is how it will look in the future. This is how it was a century ago, and this is now, and this is how it will be in the future. You see, we always uh, we always keep all the all the existing existing buildings. Here this is the existing situation, how it will be. This here we see the different uh, open spaces, the, the parks that are scattered. And the environmental features, as I said, the, the starting point was to, to give sunlight to everybody. But a part of that, it was uh, the municipality really wanted to create a neighbor, an uh, exemplary neighborhood where all the all the uh, all the energy that is needed is created and produ is, is produced in the site. And for this, what we used was 65% was produced uh, by uh, by solar energy, and the 35 was by geothermal energy. For the solar panels, we all the buildings they have solar panels in the south, and it was this was not enough. So we actually in here we were lucky that the uh, the municipality has a has a uh, owns the owner. A plot, so we could install also solar panels in the in the plot next to it, that it will it will provide energy to the to the neighborhood. And a part of this, we took into account all the harvesting and recycle of the of the rainwater for cleaning the <coughs> for cleaning the public space, also the reuse of grey water in the houses, the biodiversity we try with these small uh, pocket parts actually to improve the the. Uh, the ecological value of the of the area. See, since 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 this is placed in Bordeaux and it's very very sunny in the summer, we also it was very important also in all the in all the public space to take into account the comfort, the summer comfort. The buildings they were also designed uh, with the proper dimensions and orientation to be energy efficient and of course also take into account the the recycle of the of the waste. So at the end, this is the, the, the result of the, of the master plan. And this is the last project that I'm going to present. This is, um, here actually we explore again this relationship between nature and, <coughs> between nature, uh, nature and the cities and how people can benefit uh, to this uh, close relationship. The location is in the city of, uh, of Almer, this is in the, in the Netherlands. And again, we were asked, uh, actually this is for an uh, uh, agriculture, uh, agriculture expo, and 
this happens every 10 years and this was a competition for this uh, for this expo but uh, and this was it will, it will be located in front of the of the city center but actually what MBRD proposed was instead of of design and to create this uh, temporary expo what it would be if after the expo it remains and and we add programs so actually all this program is integrated in the in this green uh, exhibition so this is Almere, who, this is the center of Almere, and what we aim with this program is to grow a green city. And why this, uh, this aim of green cities? What is the qualities that we can get from, from green? Actually, green absorbs CO2 and produces O2. Green purifies the, the water, also hills, as absorb the sounds, creates shadows, is habitat for animals, it's also habitat for people, and also is fun. So then, with this, in with uh, with trying to explore this uh, this close relationship between between plants, animals, and and, and cities, then we, uh, this the concept was developed. The the Floriade, this is the name of the of the expo, shows the rich the richness of plants, also produce fruit and energy. It, then it will be a mix of city and landscape, and with all this, it will it will bring new experiences, and this is what it will be the green city. So we saw that actually, uh, yeah, uh, green and the landscape actually offers fantastic experiences. It's beautiful and it's very it's, it's exciting. So actually, why not to integrate program in all this in in nature? What it will be to have a concert in nature, what it will be to work there, so to make sports or to have lunch with, uh, with friends. We can also use it as a museum. So with all this in our mind, what we try is to really to, uh, to integrate uh, different programs into nature and also to, uh, with this, we would bring new experiences also for the, for the inhabitants of the, of the area. So at the end, what this uh, what this will be is will be a, uh, it will be a carpet of gardens. This carpet of gardens is wrapped on the location on the topography and takes on existing elements so to really integrate it so, uh, on what is there and it's covered with the with the green city. And this is the the result. Here we see the overview of the carpet of gardens and how this how it will be. So it has kind of peninsula in the in the lake in front of the in front of the of the city center and it aims to be an extension of a green extension of, of the of the city center. And how the Floriada Garden will be. We will have a plot of a garden and here we will add always a building. So that each garden it has it, it comes always with a program. So it's a program it's a it's a program garden. Then it will it will come the production the production of energy and a path and this is what uh, all this grid of gardens every single unit this is the the components that it will have and here we see uh, this is the overview of the of the of the plan of this grid of, of gardens with the different program it will be there will be university there will be hotels offices housing and all uh, extremely integrated. Uh, in with with nature and the Florida the, pro, the program that it will be there here we see this is a greenhouse can also be offices the sports field how it will be integrated in nature also pavilions uh, camping housing view tower hotel high school so actually here what we try is to is to bring new experiences to the to the inhabitants to yeah, to uh, to to offer something more than only the program. It's like we are asked to give a shopping center what it will, it will bring new experiences also that is not only the program that is required and also to look in a in in a in a wider in a wider scope that not only the simple plot that we are that we are given. This Floriade greenhouse, and now I'm going to, to show a, a quick walk through the Floriade. This is from the city center, which will be the entrance area, the plaza, the boulevards, the green highway. And what was our goals 
when we want to grow these green cities. Actually, there are four main goals. One is helping the existing cities, energizing the existing cities, greening them, and also feeding them. When we talk about healthy city, what we mean is to, to create healthy living environments for everybody, also in a healthy social and economical structure, and to create clean uh, infrastructure. Energizing, energizing the city, this means to, to create enough, and that the city creates enough, enough energy. Also, the citizens, they have to be involved in the, in the design process and to create flexible urban planning not rigid structures that will that must stay like that forever. So really to create uh, to make like reservations for the for the future. Greening the city that is to as I said to bring nature in the city and to improve the uh, the ecological value of our of our city, not to not to detach the urban life from the from nature and feeding the city. What will be, actually, we promote the urban architecture and also the production of food in, in our cities. So with all this, actually, what we, uh, what we aim is to, is to go from garden city to green cities. And the, the features of the green city is innovative. It has to be responsible. Integration, social diversity, self organization, water purification has to be also taken into account, the waste recycling, flexibility, renewable energy, food production, local economy. So, all these, so all these features are what we, we aim to integrate in, in Florida. And with this, I finalize, my, I finalize the lecture. And I hope that it brings some kind of inspiration or some kind of uh, ideas and um, above all to share with you what we hope we think we can improve the our cities. and uh, how does uh, you and Habitat maybe relate to, to all the things uh, we saw in the, the lecture? As he introduced me, I'm Ishaq Maitumi, I'm currently the officer in charge of UN Habitat. And thank you for the presentation and thank you for coming to share your experience, particularly very interesting ideas and, and reflections. But it's always not always this we don't get much uh, the opportunity to to be in such organization or such situations where we are in a university where it's a place of learning a place of exploring the minds and a place of really t where innovative ideas could develop so it's for me it's a pleasure to be in the university setting so it takes away from the normal day-to-day -day work that we do in life and an opportunity for us to have a healthy interaction and discussion. But coming back to the presentation, I think the ideas we, we saw today, a lot of them are fascinating, some of them are asking us questions, and some of them are making us curious about things. But, but one, one important thing that we inhabit, you inhabit, are championing the cities because we believe that cities are where it all happens. That's where the engine of growth, that's where the employment opportunities, that's where all the excitement, the creativity, innovations happen in cities. 
and we needed to make sure we manage the cities in a way that allows such things to develop and blossom and develop. So it's important to see how we take a, a place that has just been kept abandoned, put in a lot of creativity and imagination, and we can bring things that will allow them to, to develop. But particularly, I was I was really interested in, in your the sustainability in the heart of of structural huge developments, but at, at the heart of it is sustainability and making sure it is within the human scale, which is very important, where it's sometimes lacking, where the big developments, big huge developments that is not in keeping with the human scale, and of course affects the livability of a city. But also, I also was fascinated to see how we're looking at uh, spaces within a city, not just a place for structure, but how do we bring the, uh, the vegetation back to the life of the city, not having, as we say, concrete or structures within the city scale, but in bridging the gap between vegetation, landscape, and balancing that, which is also also fascinating. But also, also to in terms of urban planning, to see how urban planning, how will they respond to such innovative ideas and how do we ensure that our systems are flexible enough, are robust enough to cope with this imagination because as we know the spaces within the city are finite, they're not cities, we don't want cities to grow poor because that's, that creates sustainability issues, but how do we densify cities, how do we maximize the use of place and bearing in mind the human scale and the experience that we, we enjoy or benefit from a city, which I think is one of those interesting things in the city that we see today. It's, it has its challenges and how do we think of innovative ideas to, 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 to change or to improve or to, to get our cities, the city that we pristine, or all the cities in Kosovo, to, to engage in such such innovative ideas that would unlock the potential of these cities. And I know in the room here we have students, we have professional practitioners, I see some of them, I know I'm sure they might have some questions, issues to raise in this, or something to, to, to add to, to all the ideas. So for me, this is an opportunity, it's a university, it's a place of learning where we should feel free to, to express our our, our imagination and our thinking, and we are here to answer, and you are here to answer any question. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very, very much for uh, taking from uh, what you said. Uh, I would like to correlate uh, the kind of a debate on direct uh, with one of my professors, because uh, I do know he has questions. And uh, Hello, uh, my name is Igor Ginoli. I'm one of the teachers of the university and I teach urban design. But I, I have been followed a little bit on the RDV work and I, I know that you cultivate experiment. My first question is if some of these a project that you show are under construction or already implemented, how do they work? First of all. Then the, the question of uh, production of energy from uh, with, the, with the solar panels. Um, I participated in a conference in, in December about the, the latest trends on, on energy production with the, with the solar panels. And the cost for one, mega, uh, one uh, kilowatt is still very high. It's around eight and a half thousand euros per one kilowatt. Concerning the, 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 the price of the production, how can we, or in what time can we expect that this solution might come here in Kosovo, for example? Another question is about the project in Barcelona. I saw that uh, the, the, the trees are as much as maybe 20 meters 
And if we, if we, if we look logically to the, to the trees, the roots of a tree should be at least 75% of the height in order to stand and to feed the, 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 the tree. Are these trees special ones or particularly generated or... Uh, because I, I didn't have a chance to see any project in this kind. I know that there is, a, there is a shopping center in Istanbul designed by Farshid Musavi, which is also with a green roof and is particularly cultivated greenery, but not with the high trees. So these are questions that might provoke the others as well to, to uh, respond to the projects. Thank you. So for the first question, about which of these projects they are implemented from all of them that I presented, except the one in Barcelona and the Vertical Village, which is this is a study. For the rest, they are all and they are all projects that are going to be built. The one in Bordeaux, for example, is already it's just it's already a few phases has been has been approved, and next year it will be it will be a start. The, the construction will will start. About the Floriade, also it was. Now we are uh, in close uh, working with the with the municipality, and we won the competition. And now it's, it becomes all these uh, phases just to 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 make it real. So yeah, it's true that actually from what is the this of yeah this. It's also interesting to see how the project evolves from what is the, the design the design state and to the to the to the construction state. We really try to keep as much as possible the idea, but it it it, go, it undergoes a lot of uh, sometimes you cannot avoid it. It undergoes a lot of transformations, and you cannot keep the concept as clean as you have it at the beginning. But actually, it's like we always think that aiming at very high then you, you will reach something that has certain quality. So that is also what we, from the very beginning, we, are, we try to be very ambitious, but it's just as a principle to, to get to good quality. It's not, to, it's not just to be iconic, to be provocative, actually. What we think is that you have to aim at the very highest to, to get something that is, that is good, because then the reality, as you, uh, you were also addressing, it brings a lot of constraints. Also, in all these projects, it's very important the client. Actually, it makes a very big difference if you have a client that is collaborative or you have a client that is not. It happens many times that we win a competition and then the client, it's a, it's a difficult one and it's very hard to implement the, what, uh, what, what we express in the, in the competition or in the early stage of the project. About the, well, in this case, actually, both the municipality of Almere for the Florida project and the municipality of Bordeaux, they, they are very collaborative. Also, for example, in, in Bordeaux, in, in, all the, in all the production of energy, they are, they are subsidizing a lot, so that makes a difference because it's not the users who has to pay 100% of it, but for example, all the geothermal, ter uh, all the geothermal energy, it will be, it's the, it's the municipality who takes care of it and also partly of the, of the solar panels. We did a study and actually the payback of the solar panels is really high. If you pay back for, for our users, then you need 20 years. So at the end, when your house is, uh, is, is old, then you start to, to get the, the payback. But normally when the solar panels actually it makes sense to use it when there is subsidies from the, from the government. This is what happens a lot in Germany, it's also happening in uh, in the in North countries and in France now it's happening. So as I said, we are all responsible. We cannot give all the responsibility of the energy production to the to the inhabitants because then it will never happen. It has to be the municipality has to be involved. The, even the central government has to be involved. It's a uh, yeah, many actors who have to be involved and all together this responsibility. That's what I was also addressing this call to responsibility in all levels. It's not only the level of the of the user that has to uh, to decrease the consumption, but it's also in the level of the municipality who can promote the use of clean energy, the use of clean transportation. So yeah, it's a yeah it's a work that many parties are, are involved, and it's very important the, the collaboration of, of all of them, and only then yeah the good results can be can be achieved. 
and that is something that we we are we experiencing in free projects where you can I remember this one project it was an eco city that actually we we aim at very very high we really wanted to be an exemplary uh, eco city but at the end the client didn't collaborate properly so it makes the process very hard and sometimes yeah, you have to the, yeah, the compromise that you have to take is not what uh, what it was expected at the beginning. So, as I said, it's very important yeah, the collaboration of all the all the parties. About the project in Barcelona, about the the, the trees, actually we did a calculation. The slab should be four, four meters, and the main pro these trees they are pine trees from from this from from this area of Barcelona. They don't have very very roof. Uh, very deep uh, roots. In four meters, it will be it would be enough. The most challenging in this project is actually in Barcelona. There is when it rains, it rains a lot and very short period. So the, all the, the extra load that the the the, yeah, the structure we will will have to carry when when all the all, all this uh, earth is is wet. And also, actually, one of the problems that also also we had to deal here it was also the fire problem with this uh, with the with the forest on the on the top. So actually, it always happens that when yeah when when you propose ideas that are not common and not standard, you also have problems that are not common and not standard. So it also it needs. Uh, yeah, and it's experts that uh, that are involved. You know, try to think. Uh, yeah, try to have open mind to see different solutions and uh, yeah, to to think out of of the box. That is actually you have experience. That uh, yeah, that's how you have to deal with this kind of projects. But uh, above all, well, what we really try is not to. Um, not to be blocked by the constraints. You will always have constraints. There are many constraints, but uh, yeah, as, uh, as I said, with a good team, many things can be solved. But it's very important the collaboration of all parties. Can you please the bush? Hello, uh, this is Katrin Kabashi. I'm a student, ar uh, architecture student in Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, I've taken sustainability design uh, class last semester and would really like to know more about um, uh, sustainability. Um, how green should architecture be when there is a poor air quality outdoors? And how much effort you were given to the places with poor air quality outdoors and versus the places with high quality outdoors? Actually, uh, it's, a, it's a misleading idea that sustainability is expensive. That's also a big mistake and somehow it has been spread all over that we think that green buildings, green urban planning is expensive. Actually, what sustainability brings is the, is the, old, uh, is, is the old solutions to bring now, to make interpretation of the old, old solutions now. So it should be possible to make a, to make a, a sustainable house in a, in a poor environment or in a rich environment. Sustainability at the end is to, it's, it's simple, it's not complicated. It's to take into account uh, sunlight, daylight, to take into account uh, ven uh, ventila uh, ventilation. Of course, when it comes to big buildings, uh, escape scraper, escape uh, scraper, then it's another thing because this, uh, this is big structure where actually technology is needed. But uh, to make uh, houses or um, a small scale projects, that's, that's, not a, that's not a matter of technology. It's more a matter of having it into account. The problem with sustainability is that something that it has to be taken from the very, very beginning, from the project, and that sometimes that's the failure. That we, it's, first we, we put all the program together, we have the volume, and then at the end we say, oh, now we want these offices to have 80% uh, uh, of the working spaces to be, to be natural lead. And this is when it comes the problem, when, when it comes too late. But if we consider sustainability from the very beginning, then it shouldn't be an extra cost. And also if you think that sustainability also uh, asks for local material, for local resources, so yeah, it shouldn't be, um, it shouldn't be an extra cost. And one thing that is true is that the production of energy 
nowadays, as I said, if there is not the, the collaboration of the government, it's expensive. So there are, there, are, uh, yeah, there are countries, for example, as I said, in Germany, that there are a lot of subsidies and also the market is, is ready uh, to, for, for sustainable uh, materials. So then it's, it's easier than in other countries, like for example Spain, where there is not this market and then it's more expensive to get material that, uh, that doesn't have toxics or these kind of things. But uh, the basis of sustainability, that shouldn't be a, a problem and should be really, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, it's possible to implement it from the very beginning in any project. And sometimes it happens that actually it's in the poor countries when you go there and you see that it's the most sustainable architecture. <laughs> and that is from them that we should also learn. Um, hello, my name is Pilar Molice and I'm a student of architecture. And while I saw your presentation, my mind came that last semester I had to deal with a green roof. But when I saw the one in Barcelona in Spain, if I'm not mistaken, um, you created a roof which was, the slab was very thick in order to uh, stand the rain. But when I had my experience, I had a lot of critics on the roof because I had a concrete roof. And my professors were criticizing me all the time that how your roof is going to stay. So I had to change from concrete to steel. So since you are more professional in this field, I would like to ask you like, how you created such a thick concrete roof and what are the installations you put for the green roof? So, uh yeah, actually, it was the, the most problematic part, of course, of, the, of this project is, is, the, is the roof. But actually, here there's something that we discuss with the, with the client, and since it's the richness of the project, it's what it gives really the quality. So, is where we, you see, the, the other part of the, pro, the the rest of the project is very simple. It is the default is done in the in the roof, and of course, it was an extra cost in the in the very structure, and also in the condition of this of this of this roof. But it was something that the client also accepted as part of as part of the project, and also hoping that the municipality would appreciate and would also collaborate in. Because what we are doing is giving public space to this to this part of the city that it didn't have. So that it was also a, was also a discussion with the with the with the municipality how they could also somehow contribute to the to this uh, to, to this new park that we were also creating there. So yeah, I, I agree. This is the most. It was a very challenging, and it was the main. Let's say it was, it, it was the main challenge, and also the the, the main constraint of the of, of the project that we had really. It was experts who had to make all the calculations and and, and everything. And at the beginning, indeed, we we were even considering to have instead of instead of these trees to have palm trees because the palm trees they need very little surface. But at the end, uh, we thought that it. It's not so intense the experience of a forest if it's a palm tree or if it's a, of this kind of uh, uh, of pine. So at the end we went for for this solution. Hi. Um, earlier you were describing how one of your ideas was uh, densifying the cities by stacking, and I think everyone agrees with that to reduce sprawl. And another idea that you had was uh, integrating the production of energy with uh, these programs and with the city, uh, which also sounds like a positive idea. But I feel like there's, uh, there's some difficulty in, in uh, combining these two ideas together because even with the Bordeaux case, with the increase in, uh, in density, you also have a higher requirement in terms of energy production, and you actually had to use this whole extra area to create this full sustainability of energy. So, um, in that effect, you also separated. You segregated the production also for a part. You integrated what you could, but you had to segregate. So, my question is, uh, I know there's been a lot of publications and you can have sustainable buildings, but can you really have sustainable cities? It seems like they always need this extra area for support. Actually, sustain, yeah, sustainability has to do with green production, with energy production, but it's not the only... Uh, sustainability is a very wide agenda. So it does not only have to do with, 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 with the production of energy. That's the, maybe that's the first uh, impulse that we have. Can I also add daylight? Like the stacking seems counterproductive to the idea of uh, fair daylight uh, 
distribution to all of the plots? Actually, with the stacking, for example, that is something that yeah, you cannot stack as much as you want. You cannot as stack as yeah, as you wish. It's like it's, this is this block attack that I, I was uh, I was showing. That is the problem. That is just economical interest, so that they just make these big buildings and they are really ruining the city. What we have is to to stack, but not to stack as maximum, so that at the end we are. Uh, it's stuck, but giving quality to the giving quality to the city, and that means that. So what I also try to explain that you shouldn't bother your neighbor. So in this vertical village study, what we try is like you can build when you then uh, cut shadows to your neighbor. So yeah, this is not as it's not as simple as uh, as, uh, yeah, as it uh, as it looks. And as I say, that sustainability has yeah, it has many many points, and you cannot take. All of them, you cannot apply probably all of the all the sustainable points or agenda in one plot or in one district because sometimes it's yeah, it's, it's impossible. There are areas, there are flooding areas, so there are areas that um, yeah that they cannot create energy or yeah there are a lot of constraints. But what you just what we architects we should have an overview of all the sustainable issues to see which ones we can apply, to see which ones we can reinforce in our you know. Um, in, yeah, in, in, in our project and to try to have a, a, yeah, a, good, a, a good overview of all the sustainability issues. Just about these sustainable cities, the, 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 the argument you put that can we ever have sustainable cities? And I think people have raised those issues in, 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 in the numerous debates. But I think, as she said, within a city, there are places that reducing energy, creating energy is expensive. And at the end of it, all these issues, cost, there's a cost into it. But the simplicity, as she said, of how do we start? Because in a lot of cities, we, the adaptation of these buildings is when it's more expensive. That when, if you're really starting from the beginning, that these issues are embedded within the city development, the planning of the city, that means you've really reorganized the city in a way that whatever you do would reduce that. But it's a challenge. It is and it's, it's just a constant challenge because whilst we want the city to grow, to be an engine of growth, then we've got sustainability on the outside. I think it's the balance that we need to try and get to make sure we have a city that is balanced and livable. But I don't think we can there's a lot of, I mean, Germany tries a lot of innovative funding of energy, but, but that's at the cutting edge but between Germany and, and all the parts of the world. That's a big chasm, that's, that's a big divide. But we just need to keep doing those incremental steps to make cities. There are cities, as she said in our first book, uh, presentation, cities become very very economically buoyant, but they are alarmingly dirty and not sustainable at all. At all. And that circle, that circle may change, but this is the, the constant challenge. But I like the other speaker that said about, I'm afraid again, as uh, coming from, that we have big establishment that really makes sustainability as a really expensive business and has become a really, really thing that carries away that is, it must be fancy, it must cost millions, but rather those innovative ideas that we need to do, uh, put in place. And I think the presentation she, she put out today is, is to allow us to think. It's not for us to say, that's the solution, that's the answer to a plot of land you have down the streets in Pristina, but it's to allow you to begin to unlock yourself from those those corners that you are to say, how can I use this as an inspiration to do something that is fit for purpose in a location, bearing in mind the principles of sustainability. And I think for, for I would encourage us to take that idea rather than the specificity of of what you presented either in, in Bordeaux or in the Netherlands or, or that. This is just an idea that we should start to think about and, 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 and begin to experiment. Like for example, yeah, I think what is important is to, yeah, to think and to believe that sustainability is simple. 
that is not a, a, a big issue. The problem with sustainability is that lately it has been too much related to energy production and there is much, much other issues, it's, as I said, it's a large agenda. And as an architect, for example, now you, you can start uh, as, yeah, as long as you keep into account in your projects what is uh, a healthy interior environment, then you start applying sustainability. Then if, when you make a urban planning project, then to take into account how, how you can make cities that are for, for people, not for cars. Because this is actually the main problem now in the cities nowadays, that we don't want to accept it, but actually cars are more priority than, uh, than people. And we design, uh, we design just uh, parking places. We need always to have a lot of parking places. What, what it would be, we just start deleting parking places in the city and the municipality will have to bring uh, solutions to that to have uh, better bike lanes. People also, it's a mindset that we use more the bicycle and the same for the the public transportation that we are not so comfortable. Uh, our comfort zone is becoming too demanding. <laughs> and it's also, a, yeah, it's, also, it's also a mindset. And as I said, I think it's important to, to realize that sustain, sustainability is not, a, it's, yeah, it's not a difficult issue, it's not complicated. It's just it's, it's, com it's to have common sense and just to minimize the use of resources and yeah and, as, and also very important is that that I also wanted to ad I address that in the presentation is that sometimes with the name of sustainability we also allow buildings to be unexcited buildings to be yeah ugly to say it like that and I think we should be more demanding it should also be sustainable, keep the resources in mind, but also we shouldn't forget that at the end we are projecting for, for the people. So it should be exciting, it should be fun to live in these buildings, yeah, it should, it should, yeah, it should be inspiring our cities. First, I have to thank you about your presentation. It was pretty amazing. But you created me some doubts uh, and some confusion, probably I misunderstood, I don't know. Uh, I have a question. You mentioned uh, vertical villages, but should they should or should not be allowed? Because as, of, as far as my concern, I think the buildings on top will block the light of the those below. So how could that be managed? Uh, can you, you repeat the question, please? It should be so, allowed. Uh, should vertical village allowed or shouldn't? Because as far as I'm concerned, the, those on top will block the light of those below. No, actually, vertical, as I said, is an, as an study, and here what I saw is a, is, a, is a case study. And the idea, actually, that of the, of the study, what it should remain in, uh, in, in your mind is that this is how we can grow, how our cities can grow so that it become it, it is still we to the inhabitants we still offer the, the properties of the of the villages and of the small communities. And but at the same time we, we have to, to create densities otherwise uh, we will spread uh, buildings all over all over the land. So actually we 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 should create vertical villages. This is a study for us this is um this is a reaction to how the cities are growing in many, in, especially in Asian, in Asian cities and other cities here in, in Europe. Maybe it's not the case still here in Pristina. I cannot judge it because I don't know much. But actually, there are these anonymous blocks. They are just being built and built all over the cities, and it creates uh, these districts that they have any kind of any kind of feeling, any kind of uh, of identity. And maybe that's true that if you see this, this case study, you might think that there is not, uh, there is not sunlight. It's also because the perspective is, is the point of view. We have a, a model of, uh, of it. And then you see that yeah, there, is, the, there is a lot of voice, there is a lot of light. And indeed, this is the, the idea is there is like a software, as I say, that with this software, you, you, you add the location where you want to where you want to, to place your house, the shape that you want, and then uh, it, it helps you to reshape your house according to the neighbor. So actually, you build what you want, but you build taking into account what is already there. So it's not that you can build a big a big uh, slab if uh, if it disturbs the neighbor. So actually, it's also a, a how to build what you want, but respecting the others. But uh, yes, uh, as an uh, answer to your question, yes, we think that a vertical village it could be one, uh, it could be one, one reaction to how cities are growing. Of course, 
this is one example. Vertical bellies have many interpretations. Maybe this is this is quite. It, you can maybe see it provocative and maybe too. Yeah, it's, it's too. Yeah, you can even think that this unreal. But this this can also you can also think in in a smaller in a smaller buildings where there are different units where not all the houses there is just a just a floor where you have different different apartments, different sites for different kind of people, so that it's kind of, it allows mixed use of, of people of incomes. So this could be also a vertical village. It doesn't have to be uh, the what I saw. This is this was in Taipei. Probably here you cannot apply that, or if we apply it in the European cities, this scheme doesn't work. So this is the idea that that it should uh, stay of the vertical village is that how, how to grow cities. Keeping the keeping the properties of the of the small communities and of the villages, which has to do a lot of uh, individuality with community, uh, with uh, community, with diversification, with identity, with uh, individual uh, creativity. So that's the, that's the idea. I would like to come back to the question of whether sustainability is cheap or expensive. Most of the principles of sustainability is based on the experience that is all over the civilization level world. Usually we see villages under the hill and the land is left for the agriculture. So this is one of the, uh, I think, the oldest principles. Then we have Athens Charter from the 30s and also the new Athens Charter which is completed with principles which we today call sustainable principles. Issue of the sunlight, issue of the daylight, issue, issue of the distance between building, issue of one hour uh, insulation or uh, sunlight on 21st of December for each room. These are principles already uh, used from, say, beginning of modern architecture. If we want to, uh, say, try to implement something in Kosovo, I agree that there are, there are many opportunities and uh, I think we have some examples in bigger and in smaller scale. We have a neighborhood which is fully equipped with geothermal heating and I think there are 125 houses already with geothermal heating. Here in the city we have a green school which has geothermal heating, which has uh, solar panels which is uh, equipped with green roof and has rainwater harvesting system. So yeah, the, 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 it is possible. For example, Green School, uh, just to give some, some figures. Normally the, the expenses for heating in a school are close to 50,000 euros per year. In the Green School we have 5,000 euros for heating and cooling. Or the bills for electrical energy per one month, per, uh, one month is only 12,000 euros, 1,200 uh, euros. So I think it is possible, and it is possible also in Kosovo, but of course the, the um, uh, incentives from the government are necessary and we still don't have policy that takes uh, into consideration that the government should be responsible for decreasing the energy consumption. Nothing to add? No, yeah, yeah, I oh, sorry. Yeah, I totally agree that this uh, that is needed. Uh, yeah, when we talk about production of energy, about this more sophisticated. When there is a technology that is sophisticated, then we need uh, we need uh, subsidies from the government in order to 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 make it possible. And that's uh, yeah, that's something. Yeah, that the, at the end the yeah. We as a, we think as, as an architect that we should also propose to the to the to the, to the municipality also to bring this um, 
Yeah, because sometimes we, yeah, sometimes it happens that the professionals we, because there's a lot of problems, then we don't, we, we like the, we we block the process. And first, as uh, as an architect, we can the, the basis is, is actually in our hands in the in the design process to have a healthy environment that we can do it just from the in the design state. All these other things of water reuse, water recycle, and this this needs a double system of swelling uh, of uh, infrastructure is also the production of energy also needs, and that that is why I agree where I agree that we need the, the collaboration of the. Of the of the municipality and also the commitment uh, of them and in that sense what is important is is the use when if the users are able to be part of the process if the build of the city is an is an open process where the users they have a say and they have they, they can also express their opinion then it's easier that, that the government they will they will realize of the needs and this is maybe one. Uh, this is also a, a, a problem in many in many countries that uh, the cities grow in the offices and not in the and the, the the population, the inhabitants. They don't have uh, they don't have a say on it. And maybe they are, yeah, there is an, an exhibition of the project, but it's not announced. And this uh, these things actually is blocking yeah it's blocking the process because it's only when we all the people we express our worries and we express what what we need that maybe it can it, it can change so i think it's also a call for opening the opening the design process the design process of the cities and to involve the to involve the the, the, the users thank you martin very much